Hello and welcome to this new video. Today's topic, 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 topic. Today's video is about what it's like moving to a new country. And obviously, this mostly this is mostly from my perspective. But I did move with a bunch of international students, and part of the program forced us to talk to each other about our feelings and stuff like that. So I kind of know what they were feeling. Anyways, I'm going to separate this video into three phases plus one preface because technically. The preface is before you move, and the video is mainly about what happens after you move. So, first preface is before you move, um, the few months leading to you coming to or going to your new country, and I think this is kind of like the most exciting. I don't know. I don't know if exciting is the right word. You're like anticipating everything, right? You're kind of worried that where you're going doesn't. It's not going to be what you've been reading about, what you've been looking at pictures at. You're worried about your school, you're worried about making friends, you're worried about all that stuff, right? And it's kind of like all this anticipation building up. And I think that's kind of like the most stressful part about this preface. It's just there's so much anticipation, so much things that you don't know, and you just want an answer for it. You want an answer for it now. You just want to know how it's going to be so that you can make your decision as to whether you like it or not. And that's where we're gonna leave it because this video is not about that preface. It's about phases one, two, and three. Anyways, phase one. When you first get here, when you first get to wherever you're going, everything is so exciting. I don't know why, but for most of the people that I was with, including me, getting to the new country was just so, so, so exciting. Everything feels new. The streets feel new. The people feel new. The houses look different. School is different. Teachers are different. The language might be different. Making friends is so easy for some reason when you're like all alone, <laughs> or when you're also we were all in a program, so we kind of got forced into friendship because no one knew anyone. So everyone's everything was so exciting at first, and everyone was so happy and so excited, and everyone just wanted to have fun, right? Um, I was part of the weird group of people that didn't drink, didn't like parties, and <laughs> really were not. Uh, specifically running from responsibilities so I think for me phase one was like less intense than for everyone else because I did see some people that were just so excited about this new freedom that they thought they had which we'll get to in phase two why it wasn't probably the best idea for all of them but anyways I think about 60% of the people that were in my program they were all so excited about their freedom of their happiness they were they don't have to follow they thought they didn't have to follow their parents rules anymore and you could tell that they mainly moved away because they thought it would be an opportunity to party and just have fun but anyways then came phase two when all that excitement starts dying off um, you've probably been in school for a few months so you start having exams you start realizing that all this partying that all of them were doing all of this excitement starts dying off and it hits hard it hits some people really hard you, still, you also start missing your family, maybe you realize how much you actually appreciate all those things they did for you. And also, you start realizing that people are people, houses are houses, school is school, and streets are streets. And it doesn't matter where you are, things are not as different as they seem. And for all of those people that were here for the party and for the excitement, it starts to hit them hard. And this is when I saw the most of them just saying I don't want this anymore and going back home or really crashing hard because they couldn't pass in school or they were doing really bad with their house families or their dormitory rules or stuff like that but yeah anyways it's just I think it's a realization stage where they really start realizing that moving to a different country doesn't mean that you can just leave all your responsibilities behind and even for me and the group of people that I used to hang out with, that we were kind of like the more down to earth people that we didn't, I don't know if that's the right word, but the less party people, we were more here for, because we actually wanted to live in Canada because Canada had something that we thought was better for us, kind of like a better lifestyle or more people here, like the hobbies that we liked and stuff like that. The people in my group, we were not hit as hard by the realization that we had to, um, keep our grades up in school and stuff like that but we still got hit by missing our families and realizing that Canada might not have been as different as we were expecting it to be because I was hoping that everyone was gonna be the way I wanted it to be right everyone was gonna like the things that I like because 
I mean, we're all naive at some point, right? And I thought there was going to be even more of a difference. And to be honest, I did find more people that liked the stuff that I liked here than in my home country in Mexico. But still, the difference is not as huge as I was expecting it to be. So even if it didn't hit me as hard as it hit the people, party, the party people, it does hit. And also you start missing your family and all that stuff, right? But yeah, this stage I think is the realization stage where you start realizing that maybe you might have moved for the wrong reasons or you might have had really, really, really high expectations and you start realizing that maybe those expectations were not very realistic. And then comes phase three, which is where the people that actually managed to stay past phase two, the people that actually managed to pass school, the people that managed to keep in good terms with their host families because there was a lot of people that got into trouble with their host families because they were trying to have I don't know they were hoping for this freedom that they really didn't have because they're still teenagers right I moved here for high school originally so they still had rules that, had, that they had to follow and a lot of them just didn't want to and they ended up having to be sent back home even if they didn't want to but anyways by phase three you went through the excitement you went through the realization and you're kind of like in your new normal and at this point is when you really start to see who's going to stay and who's going to go. <laughs> and for me, I had come to terms that maybe Canada wasn't as different as I thought it would be, but it was different enough for me. The stuff that I really wanted, the people that I met, the things that I learned how to do, the things that I learned, the things that I was doing, my new lifestyle was perfect and it was exactly what I wanted it to be. Uh, maybe a little bit less intensely different than I expected it, but it was what I wanted. I had more friends I like to do the stuff I like to do. Um, I loved the country, I loved the, I don't know, I just fell at home. And I think it was the biggest thing. In phase three is when you really get to see if can, if wherever you are feels like home. Because you're not so excited, you're not so scared anymore. You've been here for long enough that it becomes your new normal and you actually get to re really see whether or not this new normal is right for you. So this is when you actually start to see people that are not crushed like they were in phase two that go back home but they are kind of like yeah you know what this is not for me. So a lot more educated decision less rushed I think that in phase two because I, in those few months the people that left they were just kind of like done they just wanted out they were they crashed and burned really really hard. By phase three, people were kind of more, uh, I don't know, more realistic about the thing and they were just kind of like, you know what, this is really not what I was hoping for, I think I'm going to go back instead of just, have, I went out. And I think most of the people that made it all the way to phase three ended up staying, they kind of made their new normal, they made peace with it, they realized kind of what difference are actually different and what similarities kind of just, just, you just can't run away from. And I think... That's pretty much it. So to sum it up, moving to a new country is very exciting at first, then it gets very scary, and then it normalizes. And once it normalizes, you get to see how the country really is, how living in a different place really is, and whether or not it is good for you or not. In terms of friends and leaving your family behind and stuff, making new friends is not that hard. Honestly, if you really want to make friends, you'll make friends. Um, I'm terrible at making friends, I've always been, and I might not have a lot of friends even here in Canada, or I'm, I still think I have more friends in Mexico than I do here, but the few friends I have are great friends, and honestly, I, I'm one of those people that really don't need much, I just need a few people to talk to, I just need a few people to do things with me, and I'm happy, and for me that's what I found, and I'm very happy with it. Um, in terms of leaving your family behind, that always hurts. I think that's the hardest part. Because if you're thinking about moving to a different country and you're not moving just to party, just to get away from your responsibilities, if you actually have a purpose or a reason why you want to go away, you will make it work, believe me. You already put all this work, <laughs> you're probably going to make it work like I did and like all those people in the group that I was hanging out with that kind of were like me and they had more, more of an idea of what they wanted than just partying you'll make it work. Uh, I think what really matters is whether or not you're going to be able to stay away from your family for really long periods of time because you don't realize how much you, how much you really miss them until you're apart for maybe a year at a time. And now with this whole pandemic, even longer, and it's, you start to realize that maybe the decision you made 
had more consequences than you thought. But it's all about whether the good out outpowers or overpowers the bad and in my case it does. I love where I am, I love my life right now and I think moving to Canada was probably one of the better decisions I've ever made. Um, is there still downsides? Yeah, there is. There's a lot of downsides. Mainly family, friends, stuff I left behind that I wish I could have brought with me. But we can't have everything, right? So I think more than anything is that. If you are thinking about moving to a different country, just really think hard about what is it that you want. What is it that you are after? Are you after the party life? After you are, are you trying to run away from your responsibilities? Because that's not going to happen. Your responsibilities are going to chase you wherever you go. But are you just going to a place because that place gives you better opportunities in what you already know you want because if that's the case just pick a place that actually fits what you want and believe me you'll make it work and if you're anything like me you will be worth it anyways this video is getting a little long i was hoping i would keep it short but it seems that my problem of talking and talking and talking is still a problem so i'll stop talking Thank you so much for watching. This was Fantasy Girl 77 and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and checking me out on Twitch. My Twitch channel is the exact same as on YouTube, Fantasy Girl 77. And thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.